Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. Wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Hello, you are listening to the Late Bloomer Living Podcast. It's season four, and here we are still reimagining, rethinking, and redefining what it means to be in midlife and what's possible as we age. We are gathering energy, momentum, and excitement for our next chapter via candid conversations with other midlifers about their own pivots, pitfalls, and triumphs. I'm Yvonne Marchese, your host, and I'm so happy you're here. I created this podcast to give you inspiration and let you know you're not alone in feeling stuck in midlife. Both men and women are welcome here, but if you are a woman, I also invite you to join the Age Agitators Club for Women, where we come together monthly to hatch our plans for making waves as we age. Being part of this community for women will remind you on a regular basis that you're not too old, and it's never too late to do that thing you've been thinking about. You can find more information at latebloomerliving.com forward slash community. I hope to see you there. Hello, my friend. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited to be back for season four of Late Bloomer Living. I have missed this. I have missed you. I have missed, oh, my gosh, just sitting down and hitting the record button. My little heart's going patter, patter, patter. (laughs) Full disclosure, part of the reason my heart is going patter, patter, patter right now is... um, Let me give you a little background. What I'm going to be talking about today is something that has been really on my mind lately. And it's the idea of aging playfully. It's the idea of not just aging playfully, living playfully. Like, how can we incorporate a playful attitude into everything we do? Part of it is the idea of taking time to play, like step away from the computer, step away from your phone and the scrolling and all the things, step away and make time to play. For me, this summer, that's been a lot of roller skating, and oh my gosh, that's been so much fun, I can't even tell you, and One of the reasons I took a long break between season three and season four is that I've been working on a project. I'm very excited about it. And that project that I'll I'll tell you more later, I promise. But that project has really got me thinking about this idea of aging playfully and how to be more playful about my work, about everything I do. It's the idea of I get to do this thing, not I have to do this thing, which when I can do the judo in my mind to think about things that way, I got to tell you, it is a it is a game changer to do that. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I get to do this podcast. Nobody's Nobody's telling me I have to do a podcast. I get to do this podcast. I get to come here and talk to you. And I get to do photography. When people hire me, yeah, there's an obligation there, but you know what? It's a dream that I had for oh so many years to be a full-time photographer. And that is what I get to do now. And when I find myself getting caught up in the grind and the OEO, and I've got to do this thing, and I've got got my to-do list and my checklists and all the things, it's not feeling very playful, gotta say. And I'm just thinking, okay, I'm 55. I turned 55 this July. And I'm thinking about, it's very likely I could live to be 85 or beyond, really. I'm pretty healthy right now, so thank goodness, you know. Um, If I can keep my body moving and and, and do the things that I'm learning about to try to keep healthy. Who knows how long I'll live? And here's the thing. I really don't care how long I live. I just care about feeling good for the rest of my life. And I think part of that is this idea of play 
and incorporating that and not having exercise feel like another, oh, I got to exercise. Or check, I exercised today. You know, just checking off the boxes. I hope you're with me here. Anyway, so I I was talking about why my heart was going pitter-patter when I hit the record button. One of the reasons why my heart is going pitter-patter is because I was in my kitchen this morning in my big red comfy robe, and I was making a second cup of coffee, and I remembered that in the Age Agitators Club, we decided to do a dance challenge to embrace this idea of aging playfully. We as a group decided we should all do something that we that is outside of our norm, that is not something we normally do, and we should all pick something that we all think would be fun and do it, and then by the next meeting in a month that we will have done the thing, okay? So so we didn't know what that was when we ended the meeting, but we kind of kept in touch, and it, that ended up becoming a dance challenge, and, it, it, and we have to learn three line dances, people. Can I just tell you I am not a dancer? This is not a thing for me. I love to dance. Get me on the dance floor at a wedding or something like that. I do love to dance, but I'm not a person who, I don't know the line dances. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like Lucille Ball from I Love Lucy every time I try to do one of these things. Oh my gosh. So this is what we chose. (laughs) Way out of my comfort zone. And this morning I thought, okay, I wanted to get a lot of work done this morning. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to start my day by starting to learn one of these songs, one of these dances. And by the way, I'm learning the wobble. I may be the only person in the world, I feel like, who who doesn't know. the. I didn't even know what the wobble was, okay? Um, and if you don't know what it is, look it up. It It's hilarious. And there's a whole line dance to go with this. And so I'm there in my kitchen, found a tutorial, started going through the tutorial, and she takes us nice and slow, right? And I'm learning the moves. <laughs> And she's like, and pretty soon we'll we'll start it with the music. But for now, we're just learning these steps without the music. And they're pretty simple steps, frankly. Not not that hard. But by the t- before we, the music even started, I was out of breath. Oh, my goodness. And I was thinking, you know what? This is exactly what I need. It is pushing me out of my comfort zone. It's just, <laughs> it's given me exercise. It is a fun way to do exercise. It is playful. And so that was another reason. I'm still kind of like my heart is still kind of uh, up because I did go back and finish the whole video with the music and did the dance to the whole song. I didn't do it well, but I did it. And I was sweating and out of breath by the end of it. So I'm going to keep going because I can see that this is good for me. It raised my spirits. I'm feeling giddy and goofy right now. You can probably hear that in my voice. And yeah, this, this is, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. What can you do that would be playful? And can you do it in community with somebody else? Bonus points. I was doing some research on, uh, intermittent fasting and It came up this about this. There's a lot of hormones involved in that, by the way. Anyway, it came up about the hormone oxytocin and how powerful oxytocin is. And it turns out that oxytocin is only produced in community with other people. I thought that was fascinating. So a little side note. So I want to talk about where the podcast is going this season. Taking this long break between season three and season four was very on purpose for me besides the little project that I've been working on it was also um, time for me to step back and get a little perspective on what I want for the podcast going forward because I want to make sure that I'm bringing you the best possible experience and so I'm going to do a little experimenting this year I have decided to incorporate, along with the stories that, if you're a regular listener, along with the stories that you're used to, which are stories of people who have reinvented themselves 
somehow later in life or pivoted or had an aha moment or, you know, come up against it and then figured out a way around it. That's what I've been doing since the beginning of the podcast. And the reason I've done it this way is because I feel like stories are the way into ideas and that if you can hear somebody else tell their story that maybe you can see yourself in that story and see start to kind of explore what's next for you based on how you react to that story so I'm going to keep doing that but I'm also going to start including some episodes that are around topics that I think we tend to struggle with in midlife I've put out a few feelers and I had people get back to me. I think health and wellness is a big one. And so I am going to be having on some experts to talk about how we can be our healthiest, best selves. That'll be everything from uh, physical to the mental to the spiritual. And because I do think that it's all tied up. And so I'm very excited about bringing you that extra aspect to the podcast. Ah, I'm so excited to get started and go down this road with you. And I really appreciate if you've been with me for a while. Thank you. If you're here for the first time, let's go. This is going to be so much fun. So let's dive into this idea of aging playfully. Have you ever wished that your life was less complicated, more fun? Think about when you were a kid or if you've had kids watching them, because that may be a more recent experience for you and something you can tap into. Kids know how to have fun. They're masters at it. They start each new day fresh. They're delighted with small surprises you know, special treats, opportunities to play. They play. They don't exercise. How can we adopt some of that? That's what I want to know. How much joy we're experiencing, it's a mindset. We get to choose the attitude that we're going to wear today. And one of the easiest ways to shift our attitude is to be kind to ourselves. Make small little changes, little things. Bring bring little bits of joy into your life intentionally. Oh, that was hard for me to say. Intentionally. <laughs> There's a few things that you might try. Let's see. There are things you can do like simply smiling before you get out of bed. I know that sounds really goofy. You may not feel like it. I often do not feel, I don't get out of bed. Let me just say, I don't get out of bed super happy and ready to go. I'm not a morning person. I do make myself get up early because I've seen the difference it makes in my life. That may not be for you. I'm not saying that's how you have to do it. But when you do get up, feel the comforter around you. Feel feel your soft bed And take a moment to soak that in and just make yourself smile. See what that does. Try it. Find visual inspiration around you. Get out and go for a walk. And turn, like, turn off the phone or go on airplane mode or something. And just get outside. That's another way to do it. Maybe draw. If you're somebody who likes to doodle, get a, get a crayon, get a coloring book for adults. Start tapping into your creativity. Take a break when you're in the middle of the grind. You might try putting little reminders on your phone to remind you to do this because it can be really hard to remember. But little frequent breaks can really improve your mental capacity. Your attention span actually sharpens when you allow for a five to 10 minute break for every hour of work. So let's try that. Are you, are you writing this stuff down? I might put this in the show notes. Um, you could listen to music or have a dance break in the middle of the day, one of those five to 10 minutes. Um, 
Okay, and here's where we get into it. Now I'm going to encourage you to get on your phones. Watch a video that makes you feel good, like the stupid cat videos or the stupid pet videos that are funny. My Instagram feed, I can tell you, is just a joy fest. It's filled with pandas and elephants and um, little things that I know are going to make me feel good or people that inspire me. So, you know, that could be something. Spend time with people you think are awesome. No, wait, let me reverse that. Spend time with people who think you are awesome. You know when you walk into a room and you can tell somebody's really happy to see you? That's the person you should be hanging out with more. I'm going to repeat that. When you walk into a room and you can tell somebody is like, oh my gosh, hey, hey, how you doing? That is the person you want to be spending your time with. Okay, you know what? I'm I'm actually going to adjust that a little bit because... Yes, you want to hang out with the people who are thrilled to be with you, but you also have to be thrilled to be with them too. So yes, hang out with the people you think are awesome. Like, figure that out for yourself. Notice when you walk into a room or when when you're hanging out with somebody, notice if you start to feel depleted in your energy or if you feel like you've got more energy after hanging out with them. Big clues. I'm just saying. Um, exercise is another way to do it. But again, let's find a way to make it playful. One of my favorite things to do these days, by the way, besides the roller skating, is stretching. And it's not stretching to get bendy and flexible. I I call it yummy stretching. (laughs) Uh, I do it right before bed sometimes, and it really helps me sleep. And it's like, just stretching to the point where you feel it and and kind of letting your body tell you what to do next. Like turn your lights down low, get on a little yoga mat and just start exploring where you feel tension and try that. That's kind of fun. Just anything that you can do to move your body playfully, try it. See what that does for you. I'm a big fan of meditation. I think you all know that. Try it. Start start with little bits. If you're not a big meditator or you think you can't sit that long, a minute makes a huge difference of just uh, just a minute of sitting there and breathing and watching your breath. If you do it on one of your little five to ten minute breaks in between your work, that's pretty cool. And here's a big one. Uh, this is in my reboot, my five steps to your midlife reboot. One of the things that I that I found I was doing quite a bit before I, I started down my new journey of my whole like, you know, morning routine and all the things that started making me feel better. This was in my 40s. I noticed that I'd get on the phone with a friend I hadn't talked to in a while and they'd say, hey, how you doing? And I would have like a litany of complaints. And I realized, I was like, man, why would anybody want to talk to me? First of all, I'm a bore with all these complaints. But it wasn't just the complaining to other people. It was also complaining in my head. And so I want to encourage you to just notice when you're complaining, whether it's out loud or whether it's just in your head, And just notice it and be kind to yourself because it is something that I think we all do. Hello, human. But notice it and see if you can start turning that around. Maybe you can reframe the way you're thinking about something. Um, Challenge yourself to say, go look at the complaint and go, oh, okay, well, this thing is really bothering me. Why is it bothering me? hmm, am I right about that? Is that thought that I'm having about that thing true? And if you can start really examining what you're complaining about, maybe it's not as bad as you think it is. Or maybe you can look at something that keeps happening that makes you feel a little bit like a victim and look at it like, 
what am I learning from this? Get curious about it and see where that leads you. See where curiosity leads you. It's kind of fascinating. And it may lead you to make a change about that thing that you're complaining about. It might prompt you to actually take some action on it. It's still something I'm working on, by the way, all the time, all the time. Basically, here's the thing about playfulness and and reinventing yourself. It really is all about mindset, you know? And in particular, when we talk about aging playfully, when you can catch yourself being ageist against yourself, it is like that moment of catching yourself, it is powerful. You might have automatic thoughts about your body or what's happening to your body, you know, your neck or your arms or different body parts that you're picking on, you know. Um, Notice when you're having those automatic thoughts about yourself because when you notice it, it's kind of like the complaining, that's where your power is. It's the power to rethink it and to rethink what's possible for you as you're getting older. Yeah. That's where I'm at on the journey right now. I don't really have a lot of answers so much as I have curiosity about where this is leading me and where it might lead me. And when I get that curiosity going, it amps up my excitement for the possibilities that are ahead of me. And I feel a little less scared about getting older. So that's all for now. I'll be back next week with an expert guest. And I'm so excited to bring her back. She's been on the podcast before. That's all I'm going to tell you for now. Very excited. Um, Come on back. I love you. And I'm so happy to be back here with you. Oh, and... I just realized I've been sitting here for about an hour. I think it's time for me to go learn that wobble. Oh, my goodness. Wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble, baby, wobble. Oh, my gosh. What am I doing? Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here with me for this time. And, hey, can you do me a solid? Can you do me a favor? Uh, If you've got five minutes, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. It helps this podcast reach more people. I would totally appreciate it. Thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe and well. Talk soon.